you've heard about Splash Mountain, right? Oh, I had no idea Splash Mountain was built in 89. I'd forgotten about it. I actually knew it, but I'd forgotten. And it was based on the Song of the South. It's the water ride. The big water ride at Disneyland is... Oh, yeah, that's being turned into the uh, Princess, uh, they are going Princess to and the Frog. Right. right. That's the one there. I don't, I don't even remember the music from that book. No, nobody does. I think, <laughs> I think me and Chew must not be named were like two of the 15 people in the country actually watched that film. But it was... Because it was... The reason why is because that was the last production from Walt Disney Feature Animation. So... Hmm. So out of deference as a kind of salute as, as they left the docks, then... I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It was not a bad movie. It was movie, a pretty cute movie. I liked the New Orleans thing to it. I did like that. But, I mean, actually, that that might not be too bad. That'd be pretty cool. But you would think that it would be in New Orleans. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, the atmosphere yeah. is already there. And they're making a live-action movie at the Magic School Bus. I did hear about that, Starring yes. Elizabeth Banks. Never mind. <laughs> I used to like, look. I Hold used on, stop. To, that is exactly my thought. I used to like Elizabeth Banks, but then she went all feminist. And it's like, <laughs> men are bad. Men are horrible. Well, then Women you don't want good. men's money, do you, Elizabeth Banks? Bye-bye, you're done. Like every time Thanks she, for playing. Bye-bye. Because she did Charlie's Angels and blamed that it's not, it didn't do good because of men. Yeah, I remember that crap. Yeah. That's why I don't... I have never spent money on Elizabeth Banks movie, so I'm not going to say I'm going to yeah. I'm going to boycott like her now because I've never spent a single solitary dime on Elizabeth Banks anything. So, so yeah. I can't say I'm boycotting something if I never took took part of it. Anyway, <laughs> so is there anything in your Paula newsish that we haven't talked about yet? Can we look at this? Uh, actually, yeah, I thought we would I have more stuff to. I think I covered everything. Like last time, we was like on point. Like you had what I had, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Well, first of all, we should really talk about the two major box office hits over the weekend. That would be a good idea. Let's try yes. this. So now that the you know ever since the whole pandemic, movie theaters and drive-ins are opening back up, but they're showing classic movies because all the new movies have been pushed way way back. So, over the weekend, two Steven Spielberg, I almost said Stephen King, two Steven Spielberg huge blockbuster films are blockbusters once again. And number one is Jurassic Park, and number two, Jaws. And I believe they both made like 15-something. <coughs> not that's, bad. That's not bad. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, Rona. Anyway, yeah. <coughs> Actually, that's my uh, acid reflux kicking into my respiratory system. Uh, let's, anyway, which is even worse than Dorona. But anyway, <laughs> there are some films that just you need to see them in a theater. And the yes. bigger the screen, the better. Yes. Now, what I would like to do is be able to sit in the front row, right in the middle of a drive-in, and just look up and just have it all the way around like a giant iMac screen. But... That would be good. Me and she who must not be named got to see Jaws yesterday. We made a date night of it. And y'all, I don't know why we never made Tomatoes and Flames an unofficial unsponsor here. But uh, they, they need to be an official unsponsor. We need to shout out for the... Okay, shout out for the cherry turnovers that are about like this... This big round. Shout out for They're the really good. shout out for the calzones. Shout out for the signature breads. Shout out for the uh, for the uh, for the pastas they offer and stuff, and of course for the pizzas. Stay away from the pepperoni, though. Like I said, you still heard me coughing. That's the pepperoni from yesterday. And they got vegan stuff. They do so have vegan, vegan stuff. And for some reason, they put asparagus on everything. I don't get it. Mm. You can get asparagus on just about anything over there. We need they, to go down there and like interview them and talk about their homemade uh, oven and stuff. Hey, if if you have mm -hmm. not had a brick-fired cherry mm. turnover as big as your head, 
you have not lived. So get down to South Maysville Street, visit Tomatoes and Flames. They're on reduced hours right now. Visit their website. They'll tell you about it or their Facebook page. And you can eat outside too. They, so, tables, yeah. they do have outside, outdoor tables. They do have indoor tables too, fortunately, because as soon as we sat down and started to eat outside, it started raining, so we had to get back to the sunset. <laughs> that's typical for our dates. But anyway, what else But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, apparently most of the box office came over uh, drive-in theaters, which was 160 uh, drive-in theaters that opened up. Mm -hmm. So, And because people are still spooked over the Rona, we are going through our second cycle, and you're not hearing this in the media yet, so if any of you media guys are listening, listen up. We are going through a second round of hoarding of the paper towels and toilet paper. We're seeing this again. <laughs> in this area in central Kentucky, we're seeing this again. Now understand, Kentucky is not one of those that's had, I mean, we've, we've had our spike, we've had our spikes in coronaviruses, but not as bad as some of the more populous states did, but people are losing their effing minds again. Here we go, hoarding the TP, hoarding the PT, hoarding the Kleenex, hoarding all this stuff that the rest of us are just like, well, you leave it the F alone. Get what you need and move on, son. I think the reason is is the whole rioting. Uh, there's a lot of truck deliveries that have decided are that they are not. To deliver. Right. Yeah, they're not going there because of all the riots. That's one of the uh, that's so. one of the unintended consequences. Your actions. You now, this I know this comes to shock to a lot of you, especially the younger you are. The more this is a shock. Your actions have consequences, mm -hmm. and you can't always tell what those consequences are going to be. You think not having fresh food in the inner city is a problem, wait until you don't have people who refuse to make deliveries of beer, pretzels, toilet paper, paper towels, anything into a war zone. They're going to refuse to do it. Yeah. And you're going to wonder why. And you're going to go whining to your leaders. <laughs> you're going to go find, uh, no, not to your leaders, the nearest camera, and you're going to start whining about it. But anyway, there you go. Uh, but, anyway. Uh, enough of the rant. We had that rant last week. But it, you know, the, the, it, all the movies that has been pushed back, like uh, Tenet, Christopher Nolan's Tenet and uh, Mulan were supposed to be the biggest ones that were supposed to open up in July. Those movies are now being pushed back again. So all next month, theaters are going to be getting more classic movies to show. So be which on the watch a, out for that. Which is an excellent thing because a lot of these classic movies are a lot better than the crap they're showing us right now. Well, Although... It's kind of it's kind of fun to sit here watch Jaws and they're playing a, a trailer for Black Widow with a release date of May 2020 and we just, <laughs> the entire audience sits there. No, it didn't. So. <laughs> it is really funny. <sighs> and whoever came up with this north, <laughs> stop it, Marvel, knock it off. God, and it's not just Marvel; it's all these. Action franchise. Stop it. Anyway, what else you got? <laughs> uh, I, um, I got some good my... news. Anyway. I got some good news and I also got maybe a little bit of bad news. Oh, why? To me. Why? Well, it has been announced that Michael Keaton will be coming back as Batman. I, I got something to say on that. Go ahead. I, I have a feeling you're going to go in that direction anyway. You want me to say it or you going to say it? You want to say it? Go ahead and say it. Say it. He's not, he doesn't come back as Batman. You'll see him in the Batman outfit just for nostalgia's sake. He's coming back as Bruce Wayne to help guide Terry McGinnis in his own movie. He's going to be Bruce Wayne in the Batman Beyond movie that spins off of the Flash movie. See, now, you must have heard that, like, recently or something, because when I heard about it, they said that it may go that way. They didn't say it will. Oh, I'm not saying it will. I'm saying this is, this is the logical progression of it, and like I said, who is in charge of DC Hollywood right now? You know his name, cause I'll <laughs> I'll read his colonoscopy if he writes it. Dude. Jeff Johns. Yeah, right? okay. Jeff Johns like, is now in charge, which means this is 
what he's going to do unless he just throws everybody a big old But now he's supposed to make an appearance in <clears throat> Flashpoint. This is the problem I have with this, again. Because Flashpoint, that's the problem. Exactly, because this is the Flash's first motion picture film. And the first movie you're going to do with him, you're going to make it about Flashpoint? That's a mistake. That's what they did with the TV show. They made the first first season about Flashpoint. I mean, it might work on TV, but like his no, first No, it didn't work movie? on TV either. There is... No, hold on. Stop. There is more than one landmark Flash storyline, yes. but none of them are as well known as Flashpoint. Even non-comic book readers know Flashpoint right now, and it gives them all ice cream headaches whenever they hear it. Yeah. Okay? There's Iron Heights. Okay? You, th <laughs> you think Arkham Asylum is nutty? <laughs> Iron Heights is run by a psychotic warden with mental powers, think Gorilla Grodd, but on a lower level, surrounded by villains on the level of Gorilla Grodd, who can throw boomerangs with deadly accuracy, which seems ridiculous on the surface, but can actually... <laughs> or you can control the weather, or you can... You can freeze things, There's, or you can freeze things. There's like two or three flash ones who can freeze things. But anyway... Iron Heights, for God's sake, take take a look into it. Look at a working... Flash is a working class superhero. Yeah. And this is what Hollywood does not get. He is a working class superhero. He's also a cop, which surprises me they haven't canceled that yet. But anyway, I digress. And there are other things to do with the Flash. True, there are not... It's not like Batman, where Batman's got an entire library full of iconic stories to tell. Oh, yeah. The Flash has, uh, as far as iconics, two or three. If I would do two movies before Flashpoint, and I know yeah. Jeff Johns doesn't know, know me from Adam, but I would do two movies before Flashpoint. I'd do one because not everybody is aware of what the Flash is, but they're not aware of who he is. Yeah. Okay? And they don't have to tell his origin story. They could do what they did with uh, Spider-Man Homecoming. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, he's just... He's already there. Yes. He's already or, a hero. Okay, do that's your first one, introduce him, okay? Yeah. And your second one, introduce the concept of alternate universes. Have him meet the Fla exactly. the Flash of Earth two. The idea of a, a multiverse that all started with an issue of the Flash way back in nineteen sixty that let Barry Allen run side by side with Jay Garrick, the Flash of World War II, who wound up becoming the Flash of Earth II, and everything. This is what actually, it's, I'm not saying it inspired the science fiction genre of multiverse, but it popularized it. It introduced it to pop culture and just blew up from there. There's your second movie, then do Flashpoint. Add the exactly. time into it. That's what I've been saying. It's like, wait until the third movie to do that? Just not the first movie. You've been saying that. Well, God, that must have been some low-hanging fruit. Anyway. <clears throat> I usually don't settle for low-hanging fruit. Like this. Oh, anyway. my goodness. In other, other comic so in, book other, in, in other words, I was saying exactly what you were going to say. In other comic book Pretty news, much. go ahead. In other comic book news, there has been rumors. And uh, this one, this rumor apparently comes from a source that says that they are right, I say they are wrong. But, apparently in the Snyder Cut of Justice League, hey. Ron Reynolds is supposed to come back as the Green Arrow. Uh, not Green Arrow. <laughs> Ooh. You touched me after saying that, I swear to God you're not getting your arm back. <laughs> you will, but it won't be the way it was attached. I'm, I'm sorry. Green I'm... Lantern. I'm sorry. I, didn't mean... <laughs> I, on the other hand, have learned to love and appreciate our new robotic overlords. I'm going to say, you know what? Huzzah for the Snyder Cut. Huzzah for Ryan Reynolds' Green Lantern. Huzzah for spending billions and billions of dollars on this until it all finally blows up in everybody's face. Huzzah, I say, because HBO Max Huzzah. sucks 
dead ass. Anyway. It does. <laughs> but I think that this story... The most overblown streamer of all time. This next is, to Quibi. This is just really stupid to hear because I'm pretty sure Ryan Reynolds does not want to go and revisit that. Yeah, he does. He's yeah, made he does. fun of it like a thousand times yeah, in his movies. He, he, all you gotta do is put enough zeros on his check and he'll be fine. I don't know. He's kind of smart. No, 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 no. He played Deadpool twice. Trust me, he has no shame. Nah. Go ahead. Well, anyway, other news. Margot Robbie, best known for Heart of Quinn, is supposed to be in the reboot of Pirates of the Caribbean. We're just going to leave that there. And in sad comic book news, Joe Schumacher, director of Batman Forever and Batman and Robin, has and a passed bunch of, away. And a bunch of other better movies. That's yes, he's done so many. And I got, did you know, and I kid you not, he did DC Cab's Car Wash and The Wiz. Mm -hmm. And shocked myself back then when I first saw them. I was, I was like, what? What? <laughs> Joel Schumacher knew how to make money off of a... Now, he couldn't make a movie very well, but he knew how to make money off of it. So... That's, that's pretty that wild. Car Wash, one of the great underrated comedic films of all time. And, oh my goodness, I, <laughs> I learned to have a whole new appreciation for for Richard Pryor with that film. So. He also did uh, St. Elmo's Fire, too. Yep. Didn't know that. I knew he did Lost Boys, Phone Booth. Phone Booth, a lot of people... Has a lot of Colin, people. It has Colin Farrell in it. He's stuck in a phone booth with a crazy guy who is like snipering people on the street if he doesn't do something. And it is, it's a good movie, but it's also the very first time that a movie was made in one day. If you've never seen Phone Booth, look it up. It's actually really, really good. It's really the good. The only problem I have with that is that absolutely nobody under the age of 40, I'm going to say under the age of 35, has actually seen a Phone Booth or knows what it is. Well, actually, that movie was made like around when all the Phone Booths were starting to go away. Mm -hmm. So, but it was a good concept. It has Keith R. Sutherland in it. He plays the sniper who's like... I'm going to blackmail you for this and this. Your wife knows about your affair and all this stuff, and you have to admit it. If not, I'm going to shoot this other person on the street. And it's just like, it's, a, it's actually a pretty wild It sounds concept, like the unauthorized sequel to 24 to me. <laughs> Jack Bauer goes nuts. <laughs> Jack Bauer goes ballistic. There you go. What else you got, big boy? All right, we well. This. All right, so, now this one. Okay, are you ready? No. No. This Go is ahead. a big one. I am going to tell you the rules that Disney have for the Marvel actors and other actors that works for Disney. Okay? And these are pretty outlandish. Now, the actors that had to that has been in like every Marvel movie since Iron Man has literally had to be on major strict rules here, okay? Mm -hmm. One, they had to be on call 24-7, no matter what time of the day. Why? Because of shoots, secret shooting basically is what they call it. Not even the actors themselves know exactly what they're going to shoot, what scene or anything. They are put in a van like they're being kidnapped, taken to a location, to a windowless room, cell phones taken away, and learn their lines before they go and do the scene. Now, when he said taken in a van like they're being kidnapped, how many of you imagine people in Mickey Mouse outfits, dressed like Donald Duck, and Goofy and stuff, <laughs> grabbing people, grabbing Hollywood A-listers off the street and throwing them into the back of a van, taking off? I did. <laughs> there is, they each cast member must be having a clean image. That means no smoking. They must be on a diet, a strict diet, okay, <laughs> and for about 
two hours a day, intense training, fitness, and must eat boiled chicken and oats. Ew. Yeah. This is no this is no joke. This is what one of the cast members said. Now, the whole thing about not seeing the script until that moment. Probably because they haven't written the script until then. Actually caused a major upset with one of the actors, Paul Bettany, who played Vision, because he has, uh, uh, oh, what is it, where you can't read? He has, what, dyslexia? Dyslexia, yeah. He has that. So that caused him a major, he was pissed off. <laughs> And in the related news, apparently, uh, Vision ran on Python. Who knew? <laughs> that was also, an in, in, a nerd in-joke. Go ahead. Also, Disney picks what Easter eggs are put in the movie. And not just the MCU movies. Every movie that they make. So, I know you've heard... There's Easter eggs in every single Pixar, anything Disney. It's put there for a purpose. It's not just, hey, let's just put that in as for a ha-ha-ha. They literally do that. Now, also, as for clean image, every single one of them has to do a charity. Okay? Now, this is a, this is a pattern that goes with all of them. They do a charity, they film themselves doing it, so that people will like that actor or actress to go see the movie. So basically, you see them being nice and stuff. No, they're being made to do charity. It's pretty sad. That's Disney. I mean, that's been Disney that? for decades. This is nothing new. That's old hat stuff there. Disney had out of out of all the big all the studios, big, small, in between, Disney is the one. And there have been reports coming off Disney Channel. The kids on the Disney Channel have been saying this for years now. Disney control knows all about micromanaging a marketing plan. So it doesn't matter who you are, if, how big a role, how small a role, you are going to do exactly what Disney tells you to do or you will not work for Disney. Exactly. Why did Tom Hanks and uh, Tim Allen do Toy Story? Now that was Pixar, but same point. Why did they do? Why did they do the first Toy Story? I don't know. Because the kids would watch it. Well, yeah. This is the thing in Hollywood. It start. It's been do, going like this mm, since about the Little Mermaid started, and Disney became cool again. Because Disney was a joke back when they were doing the Black Hole and stuff like that. Nobody paid attention to Disney. <coughs> Excuse me. When Disney did a pepperoni. When Disney did the Little Mermaid, suddenly it became cool to voice act in a Disney film. You don't want to be seen in a Disney film, but you can do voice acting. So your kids could say, whoa, look at mom and mom or dad or whatever doing this voice on the on the big screen. They did it for their kids. Yeah. That's why they took bottom, <clears throat> bargain basement, lowest union levels that they can get away with on pay so that their kids would think they were cool. And this is why people do Marvel films, because right now Marvel films are cool. And if you want to be attached to a Marvel flick, and you want that on your resume, you're going to toe the line and do exactly what they tell you. Whether it works or not. So. Yeah. It's, it's. Now, here's a quick question. Did, did uh, that article you read, did it mention which uh, nonprofits were being which charities were being benefited from this? Uh, no, they did not say no. that. They just said that they made their actors do charity work and mm -hmm. made sure that there was a bunch of people watching. Guarantee it had something to do with kids. Oh, yeah. Almost always kids. Oh, yeah. Because it's, it's kids. Disney. They st 
Disney, for all they've done, for everything they've done, we've gone over, like, touchstones, stuff children's like that hospitals. before. Yeah. It's going to be children's hospitals, charities. Something, something Disney probably gets some yeah. benefit from, at least from the name association. Just like with McDonald's, you go to a McDonald's drive through mm. and they have the little bucket there where you pay for your food, and they have a little bucket for Ronald McDonald Children's Homes, yeah. which are located in your hospitals. They don't do that, well, I'm sure they probably started doing that for the children, but now because it's got McDonald's, it's advertising for them now. And guaran guaranteed, I haven't looked at McDonald's uh, profit loss statements lately, but I bet a lot of the uh, the money they have to spend on those little Ronald McDonald House buckets probably winds up being taken off, being deducted from their taxes for uh, oh. marketing. Anyway. So, yeah, I mean, Disney uh, and Zadea actually came out not too long ago about how her and Bella Thorne was, uh, I think the show was called Shake It Up or something like that. They had to, they were made to be rivals. They couldn't be friends, they had to be rivals. So, as Zadea said that uh, she knows what they were doing to them. And she talked to Bella about it, and they that's why the show was kind of canceled. Because they was like, we're not doing this. So Yeah, well, if you don't play, you don't get paid. So, exactly. what else you got before we wrap this? That's it. That's it. Okay. Which is amazing. I covered all of that mostly in, like, some of the conversations I had with you on your news. Like, with the... <laughs> yeah, that's... It's one of those things where we, match it in there. we go back and forth. Did it had, no, I'm trying to remember last week we talked about J.K. Rowling yes. and her agency. Okay, I thought we did, but I wasn't sure. Yes. Where uh, finally one of these literary agencies stood up to the bullies in their midst and actually stuck with J.K. Rowling instead of whoever these little no-name authors were and stuff. But anyway, if we talk about that last week, then I'll just leave this on the cutting room floor. So. <laughs> it's so you got anything else you want to bring up or before we say bye con dios hasty bananas whatever yeah hasty bananas hasty bananas well in that case we're going to go ahead and we'll wrap this you got what uh, not, no, no. what nothing what? you got nothing so nothing. until next time then spike chris and spike and chris show we will see you all down the down the lane for those of you who are sticking around for what we do, then so be it. A little, little shop to talk now. The podcasts are finally starting to roll out for this show, where basically I take the audio we produce each week and just release it in podcast form. I think last week, God, was over an hour and a half long in our podcast. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Now, that, now, next Saturday, I think we should definitely go down to Scott's. Yeah, we need to we need to meet up with uh, Scott's at Scott's Comic Relief. We're gonna again. get that. We need to start talking to him again. So that will be coming. Um, and like I said, with the podcast, they're coming. Uh, not quite ready to announce a couple other th projects yet, but I don't, all that'll do is Jason. So There's just, more. Okay. There's always more. But, hey. The BS never ends. Leave you know them that. wanting more. BSNE. The BS never ends. So, anyhow. Until next time, we'll see you all. Now, if I can find my remote and if I can get the off button to work. Let's see. No. 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 Okay. Now Don't trust China. China is asshole.